Measuring the humidity in soil sounds like a very difficult task, one that might be reserved for the more complicated sensors out there. Contrarily, such a sensor is quite easy to make and can be very useful for automating garden watering. In this video, I'll explain how I made such a sensor, how it works, and how you can make your own too. The components needed for this build are the following. A general purpose op amp. I use the LM358, but anything's gonna work. A 50 kilo ohm resistor. Any value that's close to that will be perfectly fine. A 10 turn potentiometer. Any value over one kilo ohm. A piece of thick copper wire, at least eight centimeters of it. And a little piece of perf board to connect the whole circuit onto. Optional components are an LED with current limiting resistor. I use this to visualize the output of the circuit, either high or low. And an IC socket. This is for easily removing or replacing the op amp. First thing, I cut the wire into two parts, each about four centimeters long. Then I use some sandpaper to remove the insulation. I then soldered them to one side of the perf board and then proceeded to solder the rest of the components on, following this circuit diagram. Last, I added the LED with current limiting resistor. I chose a 10K resistor, and then added three wires, two for power, the red and black, and the yellow one for the output signal. I start by giving it power. Anything between 5 and 15 volts is okay. Keep in mind though that the output voltage will be about the input minus one or one and a half volts. This means that if you're using it for example with an Arduino or a microcontroller that uses five volt input logic, you shouldn't give the sensor any more than six volts or you might destroy your microcontroller. By putting the sensor in dirt and turning the potentiometer, you can get to the point where the LED changes state. By pouring some water on the dirt, you can see that the LED turns on. Now when I turn the potentiometer again, it turns off. In fact, by turning the potentiometer, you can choose at what moisture level your sensor will give a high or low output. The first thing I had to do before designing the circuit was understand what kind of resistance dirt has. To do this, I just stuck the two probes of my multimeter into the ground, about one centimeter apart from each other. This gave me a reading of about 100 kilo ohms for fairly dry dirt. Once I pour some water, this resistance goes down to about 70 kilo ohms. Since I will be using twice as long probes, I assume that this resistance will be about half as much. With this new information, we can build a simple voltage divider. We do this by connecting one probe to positive and the second probe to a resistor that goes to negative. The output of this voltage divider will depend on the resistance between the probes. The two sides of the potentiometer connect to positive and negative as well, and the wiper gives us a variable reference voltage. These two voltages feed into the op amp. When the voltage of the probes becomes higher than the one of the potentiometer, the op amp will give a high state. This means that the LED will turn on. When the dirt is wet, the resistance at the probes will be lower. This means that the output voltage will be higher, and if it's higher than the one of the potentiometer, the output of the op amp will be high. When the dirt is dry, the voltage will be lower, and if it's lower than the reference one, the op amp will give a low state. By turning the potentiometer, we can choose at what point the op amp gives a high state or a low state. As you can see, the circuit is very simple and can be used to automate your garden watering. Remember that if you want to have a high output when the dirt is dry, you just have to switch the two inputs to the comparator. This circuit is very similar to the one used to make a proximity sensor. In fact, I plan to make a video on that in the future. If you don't want to miss that, remember to subscribe to the channel. And if you like the video, drop a thumbs up. If you have any questions or doubts, just write in the comments and I'll be sure to answer. For now, that's all. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.